Hello, guten Tag and welcome back to another YouTube video. Speaking of YouTube videos, when I made my video that I bought a red Komodo, a lot of you had questions about why I didn't use the Canon C70. And I touched on this a little bit, but there were a lot of follow-up questions. So I really wanted to address this whole topic in one video. Why I chose the red Komodo over the Canon C70 for bigger jobs, bigger productions with multiple crew members, where are the advantages of the Red Komodo over the Canon C70? So in this video, I want to touch on all of the little problems that I had with the Canon C70, why I bought the Red for it, but I also wanted to do my homework. I didn't want to just complain about the Canon C70, so I tried to find a workaround for the Canon C70 for all of these problems. And granted, I kind of did. And yes, I know I need to shave, but I'm too lazy, so you got to deal with it. So now the question is, was buying the red Komodo a mistake and could I have done all of this with the Canon C70? I will touch on this in this video, but I will also briefly compare the problems that I had with the Canon C70 to the Komodo X because I put a pre-order in and it will arrive in a couple of days. And it was never my intention to replace my Canon C70 with the red Komodo. The red Komodo was always meant to be a B cam for a bigger red, a B Raptor or the Komodo X when I bought the Komodo, the Komodo X was hinted at, but it wasn't announced and I sure didn't know that it was available that soon. Again, now I bought it, it'll be here in a couple of days and then I have to make a decision. But now let's get into it. The first thing that I really hate for bigger productions with the Canon C70 is the HDMI port. It's no secret, I don't like HDMI, especially not for professional work. I had a couple of cables as well as ports break on me in the past and I always prefer SDI over HDMI. But let's get a bit more into detail. When I tried rigging out the Canon C70 with a wireless HDMI transmitter to be able to pull focus wirelessly, I just couldn't get the connection to work. So I thought that HDMI would just be the slower port because I never had any issues with SDI cameras. But in hindsight, I did some research and HDMI isn't necessarily slower by default than SDI is. There's even slower SDI connections than HDMI ports, so you can't really just say this in general. SDI cables can also be way longer than HDMI cables, which is great for live streaming if you run a wired setup. We also run a setup where we have a 19 inch Atomos Sumo 19 SE that we use on all of our shoots as a director's or a client monitor. Especially when shooting with multiple cameras at the same time, this monitor is amazing because it can showcase up to four streams at the same time. Unfortunately, this only works with SDI and not HDMI. I did find a workaround though. I used HDMI to SDI converters by Blackmagic and I will put a link down in the description below because they're actually pretty cool. But there's also a couple of downsides with it. You have another piece of equipment that A costs money, B can break on you, C needs to be powered and that is kind of a big one, plus you also need to rig it to your camera and you still suffer from the bad connection that you have from HDMI to HDMI. But once you made it work, the SDI converters are actually pretty cool because you can put a LUT directly onto the converter. So for example, you can put a C-Log to Rec 709 LUT onto one of these converters, hook it up to the Canon C70 and then you have a LUT directly being output to a monitor because I complain about this a lot in the past that the Canon C70 doesn't have the feature of outputting a LUT through HDMI. It's only a view assist and it's not accurate, it's overexposed for some reason. So that is something that I never liked. But with this SDI converter, you can actually work around this. So yeah, SDI is still my preferred option, especially when I run smaller camera setups. I don't wanna have an SDI converter attached to my camera with the power source as well as multiple cables but there is a workaround, especially for these multicam setups. The next problem I ran into is the play in the RF mount. And I knew that it existed, I just never experienced it myself. Whenever I ran heavy Cine lenses in the past, I used them on my Canon C300 Mark III, which has an EF mount, or I used them on PL mounts. So I never really had that issue. But when trying to hook up one of these Cine lenses with an adapter to my Canon C70, it was basically unusable. When you attach a focus motor to your camera and then to your lens and you want to try to pull focus, the entire lens moves because there's a lot of play in the RF mount. And you can actually see this in the image. The entire image shifts, you can literally see the entire lens moving, so you can't really pull focus with that at all. 
When using the original Canon Speed Booster with the C70, you don't actually have that problem because it comes with little brackets that you can then attach the Speed Booster directly to your camera and lock it down. But when using a regular RF to EF or RF to PL mount, you do run into that issue. So why did I think that this would go away with the Red Komodo? Because it also has an RF mount. And granted, it has way more play in the RF mount than the Canon C70 does. But I also knew that there is way more mounting options for the RF mount for the Red Komodo than there is for the Canon C70. And there is brackets and chin straps that you can actually use these adapters and lock them down to your camera itself. And as far as I know, except for the original Canon Speed Booster, there are no such options for the Canon C70. In the end, I actually ended up using a completely different solution. And the solution that I found is called the Lens Cuff. And that is a ring where you can take your focus motor and attach it directly to your lens. So now that your focus motor isn't directly attached to your camera body, you can just put as much torque on your lens as you want and there's no shift whatsoever. The downside is that this thing is pretty expensive. I think it's between four and 500 euro per lens ring. And it's a bit more cumbersome than attaching it to the rail or your camera directly. And it kind of defeats the purpose of having a complete set of cine lenses that are gear ring matched because then you have to take it off and on or you just buy a couple of those and attach them to each of your lens. But that will run you a couple of thousand euros depending on how big your set is. So it's a workaround that works really well, but it's also not ideal. Now comparing this to the Komodo X or the V-Raptor, you don't have that issue anymore because they all come with a locking RF mount. So now you can use whatever adapter you like and it locks down and you don't have any RF mount play. Now speaking of the Red Komodo having more mounting options than the Canon C70 to, for example, lock down a lens mount. This is actually a big one. The modular design of the RED cameras is a huge advantage if you want to rig out a camera for bigger sets. Not only does the camera itself have more mounting points, there's also way more third-party accessories available for the RED cameras for bigger shooting scenarios than there is for the Canon C70. It's very obvious that the Canon C70 is made for solo shooters in mind and it was never meant to be rigged out. With the RED Komodo and the RED Komodo X, you can really make it your own. If you have a production that requires all the bells and whistles, a shoulder mount, a lot of wireless transmission systems, a big lens and lens support, then there's a lot of options to do that. But if you want to have it stripped down as a crash cam, put it on an FPV drone, you can also have it in a bare minimum configuration. If you don't need to run audio, there's no audio. But then if you want to have audio, you can use an XLR module and get two full-size XLR ports directly attached to your camera. The downside with the Red Komodo, of course, is that you do have to rig it out because right off the box, you don't have anything. You don't have a side handle, you don't have a monitor, you don't have anything. With the Canon C70, on the other hand, you could just take it out of the box, put a battery and a memory card in, and then you could start shooting. With the Red Komodo, it does need to be rigged out, but then you also have way more options. With the Canon C70, it's definitely not as easy. You only have one screw on the top and a couple of screws on the bottom, and those don't even align to just put a regular tripod plate on it. I did find a really good workaround of rigging out the camera with the help of a cage from Bright Tangerine, and I just made a full video about this last week, so if you want to check it out, I will link it up here. But it's definitely not on the level as a RED camera once it's fully rigged out. And that brings me to my next point. If you rig out your camera really big, you need a lot of accessories. And all of these accessories need a lot of power. So you need to be able to run everything off your camera rig. And here with the Canon C70, you don't really have a lot of options. Canon doesn't make an expander module like they do for the Canon C300 Mark III and the C500 Mark II. And there's also a limited option of third-party manufacturers. You can go ahead and put a regular V-mount battery plate via rails onto your rig and then attach a V-mount battery. And that works and that's what I've been using for a while. But it also comes with some restraints and it's definitely not the same. You also can't run two pin limo connections that are pretty standard in the higher up options. You only have D tabs and maybe some USB ports. It's also not 100% ideal with the Canon C70 because if you put a V-mount battery on the back of the camera, you're blocking your monitor as well as the audio ports. So you need to just separate them a little and then the whole thing just it's not as comfortable and it's not as compact as I would personally like it to be. 
especially with all the newer RED cameras, the RED Komodo X and the V Raptors, you have native V-mount mounts. And then you have expander modules, this one from RED and one from Mutiny and Tilter. So you have different options of powering all of your accessories. Like I said, there is workarounds for the Canon C7D. The battery plate is pretty much sufficient for all the accessories that I need to run. And even when putting it on a gimbal, I can use a separate V-mount battery with a D-tap splitter and power all of my accessories from there. But again, it's kind of a workaround and it's not really meant for this, but you can make it work. One thing I really came to love about the Red Komodo is the app functionality. Because here, if you want to rig out the camera in places where you don't have access to the camera, a car, a crane, or for our last short film, we actually had it in the fridge. It's so easy to just use the app, control all of your settings, start and stop recording, and even get a wireless feed of what you're seeing. And this comes in really handy on different productions when you don't have access to the camera itself. The Canon C70 natively doesn't offer anything like that. I think there is a Wi-Fi module that you can attach to the camera and then log in via a browser to control the camera, but I've just heard it's an absolute nightmare and I've gone through this with the Canon C200 and it was a nightmare, so I don't really recommend this either. So here again, you can rig out your red cameras really big with all the bells and whistles, but you can also strip it down, put it on a crane, in a fridge or on an FBB drone. Another thing that has drawn me to the RED camera ecosystem were all the anamorphic modes. And you do have de-squeeze options in camera on the Canon C70, but you don't really have any anamorphic modes. On the RED cameras you have plenty of options for anamorphic shooting modes, depending on the lens that you use and the aspect ratios you want to end up with. And although this is really convenient, because when you take your footage and you put it into DaVinci Resolve, it's already de-squeezed at the right resolution that you want to have it at, it's nothing that the Canon C70 can do with a little bit more work. You don't have open gate on any RED camera, so it's still a 17x9 sensor. Again, it does a lot of the things in camera for you, but the end result will be exactly the same as when shooting anamorphic on a Canon C70. You do have a higher resolution on the RED cameras though. So if you need to crop off some of the footage when shooting anamorphic, you still end up with more resolution than on a Canon C70. And since the Canon C70 is already a bit on the softer side, slimming it down to even less resolution with maybe even vintage anamorphic lenses is definitely not a great choice. We're closing in on the end and here's another factor and that is RED RAW because RED RAW is an amazing RAW capturing format with different compressions, but you still have access to all of your information. It captures the entirety of the sensor's dynamic range at all times, and this is actually really easy to work with. It comes at a cost though. The smallest codec in the RED Komodo and the RED Komodo X, which is ELQ, is still four times as big as the smallest codec on the Canon C70, which is the one that I use most of the times. But then when shooting a red raw, it's definitely better than everything that the Canon C70 has to offer. To be fair, 95% of people don't actually make use of this and it's a bit of a gimmick sometimes for a lot of people. But when you are able to take advantage of it and you hand it off to a colorist that actually knows their stuff, then the red raw is definitely a lot better than the codec on the Canon C70. And that is a good segue to one of my last points and that is the brand name and the industry standard. When you are the one directly dealing with the client and also delivering the final end result, then you can basically make a lot of camera systems work for you. But if you're being hired as a DP and you bring your own camera package, the unfortunate truth is that not a lot of people care about the Canon C70. I've been just hired as a first AC and gaffer on a bigger documentary shoot and we were shooting on three RED cameras, a Helium, a Gemini and a RED Komodo. So everybody knows their stuff and if I would have brought a Canon C70 to that shoot, the DP wouldn't even have known what to do with it because he probably never used one and also the post-production house probably has never worked with the Canon footage and they just want to have everything streamlined. They're also way easier to rent in a lot of big markets, there's a lot of red cameras, everybody knows them and maybe they don't even have a Canon C70. I personally don't think that this is as big of a factor than people make it out to be. You're not really magically getting any jobs just because you have a red camera. Yes, it does happen sometimes that if people want to hire you and you can say that you have a red over a Canon C70, they might be more inclined. 
but then the red komodo is also not necessarily the camera that they book you for then we're talking more the v raptor sony venus and our alexa type of cameras so this is something that i would definitely not base my decision on when choosing between the canon c70 and the red komodo and now on to my last reason why i bought the canon c70 for bigger productions and that is image quality and I saved this for last because I really like the image coming out of the Canon C7. The DGO sensor is amazing. It has one of the best dynamic ranges of cameras that I have ever used. And I also like the image and the colors. But when working with the Red Komodo, I do have to say that there is something to it. A lot of people always describe the image as a bit more cinematic, whatever that means, and also creamy. And this is something that I can relate to because it feels like the image is a bit sharper but then really soft at the same time. The way that the camera renders skin tones is just, it's soft where it needs to be soft but it's sharp where it needs to be sharp. It's really hard to describe. Working with this camera was actually a lot of fun. I shot some commercial projects with it, a YouTube video as well as a short film. And I really like the results coming out of the Red Komodo. Even when shooting at an ISO of 2000, when we shot our last short film, I really was impressed with the image that came out of it. And with the Red Komodo X, this should even get a bit better. But there's obviously a lot of disadvantages that the Red Komodo has over the Canon C70. And I can't name all of them and I won't get into detail because this would be too long for this already long video. But the autofocus, the internal ND filters, no dual card slots, no internal audio, you name it. There's plenty of those. But it was never really my intention of replacing the Canon C70 with the Red Komodo. I knew this is not going to happen from the start. Whenever the Red Komodo came out, I knew that the Canon C70 is the superior camera for 95% of situations and shooters out there. But for these bigger productions where I do have time, where I want the most image quality possible, where I'm working with crews in a first AC and there's a lot of rigging involved, I think I do prefer the Red Komodo. But it's not to say that I couldn't have done all of this with the Canon C70 at basically the same end result. It's really close. To be fair, I do enjoy shooting with the Red Komodo a bit more than with my Canon C70. But this could also be that I've been shooting with the Canon C70s for years now and it just feels a bit uninspiring at this point. For now I decided to keep my Canon C70s and the RED camera and see what happens with the Komodo X, which is coming in a couple of days. And then I will do a lot of testing if I could actually replace my Canon C70s with the combination of the RED Komodo X and the original RED Komodo. If it was just like this and I would have bought the RED Komodo and replaced it with the Canon C70 and sold my Canon C70, I would definitely have some buyer's remorse and it's not a question that the Canon C70 has a lot of advantages over the Red Komodo. But for bigger sets, I think there isn't that many advantages that the Red Komodo has, but there are some and for me, they're worth it. If you made it this far into the video, I really appreciate you. And just as a side note, I graded all of the footage from the Canon C70s as well as from the RED camera with my Canon LUTs and I will put them down in the description below for you to check out. I hope you liked this video, so please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these, lighting breakdowns, there's a lot of cool stuff coming out in the future, especially now with me getting the RED Komodo X and I will also draw some comparisons to the Canon C7 in the future. So I hope to see you on the next one.